Hi, this is Kim from Emerging Creatively Tutorials, and this is ECT TV episode 81. So, hello, and welcome to a new episode of Emerging Creatively Tutorials Television, ECT TV. I'm Kim, and I help you express your creativity through jewelry making by teaching wire wrap jewelry techniques and tutorials and creativity. You'll find more free jewelry tutorials, articles about creativity, and jewelry making patterns, e-workshops, and e-courses over at my website at KimberlyKohler.com. The link will be below the video. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. So if you're watching this on my website. If you click the little YouTube icon on the lower right hand side of the video, it will take you over to YouTube. It will open up the video right where you are watching um, on YouTube and below the video you'll see a red subscribe button. So just click on that and subscribe. Thank you. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a fun pendant. This pendant is great if you've been kind of following the trends with uh, fashion lately, the real long necklaces, this pendant's great for that. But if you're not interested in a long necklace and you want to make it shorter, it works perfectly for that as well. So my inspiration for this necklace is an art journal page I made recently. So I'm going to show that to you. So, here is the art journal page that inspired this pendant. If you would like to know how I went, kind of step by step, from this page to the necklace, I invite you to come over to my blog post for the episode at KimberlyKohler.com slash episode 81, and I'll make sure the direct link is down below in the description. I love taking inspiration from my art journal pages to create jewelry designs, so much so that I created an entire e-course about it called Inspired E-Course. In the e-course, we go through creativity activities and journal prompts and then make art journal pages and then we map out jewelry inspiration and sketch jewelry designs that we take from the art journal pages and of course we make jewelry. So you can see the colors and the theme represented in the jewelry piece we're about to make. So let's just get to today's pendant tutorial. These are the materials you'll need for this project. You'll need wire, 20 gauge half hard round. I'm using brass because I've chosen to use brass for this project based on the art journal page I just showed you. You can use any metal that you like. You will need chain and like I mentioned, I'm going to make my necklace really long, and then you'll also need some shorter pieces of chain as well. So you'll need whatever length of chain you need to make the necklace as long as you would like it to be, plus some extra chain for the pendant itself. And then you'll need jump rings. And, you know, it's nice to match all these colors if you want. I'm using brass for everything. I do like mixing and matching metals sometimes, so if you like to do that, you can try that. I'm using all brass, like I said. Um, a clasp. And then you'll need a big focal bead. And then I'm also using this little filigree piece that I'm going to put on top. This part is not necessary. I'm just going to do it to just add a little bit more to my pendant. And then you'll need five beads or charms. So I'm using two of these kind of white beads that match this bigger bead. They have some kind of brass colored veining in them, just like this bead does. And then I'm going to use two rose quartz little um, pieces here. And that goes with the pink that was in my art journal page. And then I have this little tiny butterfly brass charm that also goes along with the theme of my art journal page. You can choose whatever you would like to do. These beads will be hanging down from the main bead, the main focal bead, um, from some chain. So you can decide. You, you may not even want to use five. You might want to use less. I like doing odd numbers though, so maybe three to, or five. 
So those are the materials, and let me show you the tools. I'm going to put these beads over here in a tray because they're rolling around. You'll need wire cutters, round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, or you could use flat nose pliers. And then bent nose pliers will be helpful because we'll be opening and closing some jump rings. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is decide how long you would like your pendant to be. And we're going to be adding chain to the bottom. So I've decided to cut my chain to an inch and a half. And I'm going to cut five pieces of chain all the same length. And you can decide how long. Maybe you don't want to make yours an inch and a half long. Maybe an inch would work better for you. So I'm going to cut five pieces of the chain. And I have a little trick to show you. I like to just take a piece of scrap wire and thread my chain on. The very last link here. That's the first piece I cut. And then I just will thread the next one. Thread the chain on again. The end link and just let it dangle so you can more easily see where to cut it. So they're all even. And I see that I didn't cut that evenly, so just cut that piece off at the end. All right, so I'm gonna cut five pieces of this. Okay, so I have all five cut, all the same length. I'm just gonna kind of put this right to the side. We're gonna use them in just a second. And now I'm gonna grab my wire and we're going to make a wire wrapped bead link with this bead. So you want to cut a piece of wire um, that is about three or more inches longer than um, the size of your purple bead. And you can cut a little extra wire just to give you extra room. I always say it's better to cut a little extra wire than not enough. Um, because then if you don't have enough wire, you just have to start over again and you waste the wire that you cut all together. So we're going to make a wire wrapped loop. So you're going to grab your round nose pliers, hold the wire about an inch and a half from the top of the wire, wrap around your pliers, and form a loop. So. On this loop, this is going to be the bottom of our focal bead, I am going to slide the chain onto the loop. So I'm just going to slide the chain off of here and just take the end link of the chain and just slide it on. And I'm using a really thin chain. Um, so you can decide what kind of thing you want to use. And I'm just going to slide them all on one by one. Just put them in the loop. And this is the last one. Alright, so now we're going to grab our chain nose pliers. Slide some of the stuff out of the way here. And we're just going to slide the chains off to the side here and get in here if our chain is pliers. Hold that loop. And the loop is off centered, so we're going to wrap the short wire around the long wire. And at the same time, I'm pulling the loop out straight. So it's a little more difficult with the chain hanging there, but just try to slide the chain off to the side so it's out of the way and almost pretend like it's not there while you're wrapping. And now I'm just going to wrap around two more times. So I'm switching hands because I'm right-handed. And I'm going to use my bent nose pliers. Just hold on to everything tightly so you don't drop it like I just did. And grab a hold here. We're going to go around twice. Okay, 
now. If your wraps get, they should be close to each other, and if they're not, you can just use your chain nose pliers to pull them in together. And then just trim off the excess wire, making a flush cut. So using the back of your uh, wire cutters toward the work. And now we're going to slide our bead on. And we're going to make a wire wrapped loop at the top. So just what we just did. So hold the wire above the bead about a quarter of an inch. Wrap the wire around the round nose pliers to form a loop. Grab your chain nose pliers. And we're going to go around once and then just make sure that loop is straight above, kind of centered in the middle of the bead. And now I'm just going to go around two more times. I'm just going to use bent nose pliers. Help me if you can use your fingers if you're more comfortable. And then trim off the excess wire using your wire cutters. And I'm just coming off my chain nose pliers just to make sure the end isn't poking out. So that's kind of the beginning of the pendant. And it's actually really cute just like this. But we're going to add some beads to the bottom. And um, I'm going to use this piece at the top as well. And so we'll do that now. Okay, so the next step is we need to take um, our beads and kind of get them into a form so that we can attach them to the bottom of our chain. And so how we do this is to make bead dangles. Um, bead dangles is what I call them. Some people call it a wire wrapped head pin. So you'll need head pins for each of the beads. And I made my own knotted head pin and I believe I've shown you how to do this in a video previously for some other tutorials so if you come over to my website for the blog post for this episode I'll see if I can find a link to a knotted head pin or you can just use whatever head pins you have you may have pre-bought head pins um, I teach you how to make all kinds of head pins in my wire wrapping for beginners e-course that's just one part of that e-course and so I just wanted to have just a little simple head pin a knotted head pin doesn't have a lot of decoration on the bottom but it does a little bit and it's enough to keep the bead from sliding off so we'll slide the bead on and then you make a wire wrapped loop at the top like we did for the uh, wire wrapped bead links and so you're gonna hold the wire in your round nose pliers about a quarter of an inch above the bead. Wrap around the pliers to make a loop. Grab your chain nose pliers, hold that loop in the, the chain nose pliers. And we're going to wrap around one time and straighten out the loop on top of the bead. And then wrap around two more times. And again, I'm using bent nose pliers to help me, but if you feel more comfortable just using your hands, that's fine too. Whatever works for you. And then we're just going to trim off the excess, making a flush cut. And use our chain nose pliers to make sure the end is not poking out. And I have all my bead angles plus um, I have this little butterfly charm that I'm going to be using. And so we're just going to attach one bead dangle to each end and one charm um, of the chain. Okay, so I'm just going to try to do every other chain with a different bead and then probably put the butterfly in the middle. And these little tiny jump rings. If you need help opening and closing jump rings, I will put a link in the blog post for this video. And so we're just, I'm just grabbing the first chain. 
I put the bead dangle on the jump ring. I'm attaching this bead to the very bottom. And we're just going to close it. So that is the first one and I'm just going to attach the rest. Okay, so I have added all my um, beads and my little butterfly charm. And so that pretty much completes the pendant. And you could actually, I'm, like I mentioned, I'm going to add this other piece here. But if you don't have this a little filigree piece that you want to place on the top, what you could do is use the loop at the top of the wire wrapped bead link and just simply slide your chain right through and then you'd have your pendant. In that case you'd want to flip your, uh, you'd just want to take your pliers and turn your loop so it went this way instead and then you could slide it through and then you'd wear it. Um, but like I mentioned, I'm actually going to add this piece on the top here. So, let me first make sure I have this straightened back out. And I'm just going to take a jump ring, add it to the bottom here, and then close the jump ring. And then I am going to just attach my chain, one to each side here. I'm going to cut my chain in half. I'm going to determine how long I want my chain to be. Cut it in half and attach one end to each side. So I attached a filigree piece at the top. It had three different loops. So one to attach the focal bead and then these two side ones I attached a chain. I just use jump rings, and like I mentioned a couple times now, you don't need to use this piece necessarily if you don't want to. And then I added the clasp, and on the other side of the clasp, I just made a wire wrapped bead link again. I made this side a really large loop so it could easily, easily hook, and the other side I made smaller to hook to the chain. Um, although, to be honest, this necklace I've made very long, um, so I'll be able to just put it over my head. But it's still cute to have a little, you know, a little thing on the back of your neck. So, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I um, think it's really fun and there's lots of ways you can really customize it. If you love making wire wrap jewelry, or maybe you're just interested, I would imagine if you're watching this, you're one of those two categories. It is good to have a solid background so you know what you're doing. You can sign up for my free quick start guide to wire wrap jewelry on my website. The link is below the video. I'll take you through everything you need to know to get started with wire wrap jewelry. From safety to exactly which tools you need to get started so you don't waste money buying a bunch of tools that you don't even need. Where to get wire, which is what I'm asked all the time. And some of the basic building block techniques you'll use over and over again and finally will create a project. You can find more out about the quick start guide, which is completely free, at the link below the video. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time.